Hello first graders. So today we are going to focus on a six point retelling. I'm going to read you a story and then we are going to work together to retell the story at the end. So we are going to read Alexander who's not, do you hear me, I mean it, going to move. We'll be thinking about the points of a story, the setting, the characters, the problem, how they tried to solve it, and how the story ended and how they solved it, okay? They can't make me pack my baseball mitt or my I love my dinosaur sweatshirt or my cowboy boots. They can't make me pack my ice skates, my jeans with eight zippers, my compass, my radio, or my stuffed pig. My dad is packing, my mom is packing, my brothers Nick and Anthony are packing. I am not packing. I'm not going to move. My dad says we have to move to where his new job is. That job is a thousand miles away. My mom says we have to move to where our new house is. That house is a thousand miles away. Right next door to our new house, there's a boy who's Anthony's age. Down the street, there's a boy the same age as Nick. There's no one next door or down the street or maybe a thousand miles away who is my age. I am not, do you hear me, I mean it, going to move. I'll never have a best friend like Paul again. I'll never have a great sitter like Rachel again. I'll never have my soccer team or my carpool again. I'll never have kids who know me except my brothers, and sometimes they don't know me. I'm not packing. I'm not going to move. Nick says I'm a fool and should get a brain transplant. Anthony says I'm being immature. My mom and dad say that after a while, I'll get used to living a thousand miles away from everything. Never, not ever, no way, uh-uh, N-O. I maybe could stay here and live with the Baldwins. They've got a dog. I always wanted a dog. I maybe could stay here and live with the Roonies. They've got six girls. They always wanted a boy. I could always stay here and live with Mr. and Mrs. Oberfdorf. They always give great treats on Halloween. I maybe could stay here and live by myself in maybe a treehouse or maybe a tent or maybe a cave. Nick says I could live at a zoo with all the other animals. Anthony says I'm being immature. My dad says I should take a last look at all my special places. I'm taking a look, but it won't be my last. I looked at the Rooney's roof, which I once decided to climb out on, but then I couldn't climb back in until the fire department came and helped me. I looked at the Pearson's drugstore, where they once said my mom had to pay them $80 when I threw a ball in the air that I almost caught. I looked at the lot next to Albert's house, where I once and for all learned to tell which is was poison ivy. I looked at my school where even Mrs. Knob, the teacher I once spilled the goldfish bowl on, said she'd miss me. I looked at my special places where a lot of different things happened. Not just different bad, but different good. Like winning the sack race, or finding the flashlight, or like spitting farther than Jack three times in a row. Like selling so much lemonade that my dad said I would probably have to pay taxes. My dad was just making jokes about paying taxes. I wish he was making jokes about moving, having to move. I'm not, do you hear me? I mean it, going to move. Nick says I'm acting like a puke face. Anthony says I'm being immature. My mom says to say a last goodbye to all my special people. I'm saying goodbye, but it won't be my last. I said goodbye to my friends, especially Paul, who is almost like having another brother, except he doesn't like say puke face or immature. I said goodbye to my neighbors, especially Swoozy, who is almost like having a dog, except he's the Baldwin's dog instead of mine.
I said goodbye to Rachel, who taught me to stand on my head and whistle with two fingers, but she says don't try to do both at the same time. I said goodbye to Seymour, the cleaners, who, even if it's gum wrappers or the old tooth, always saves me the stuff I leave in my pockets. I said a lot of goodbyes to a lot of people, and I good, got a lot of hugs and kisses. Enough hugs and kisses to last for a person's whole life. I said a lot of goodbyes, except I'm staying right here. I'm not going to move. When the movers come out to put my bedroom furniture on their truck, maybe I'll barricade my bedroom door. When my dad wants to tie my bicycle to the roof rack on top of the station wagon, maybe I'll lock my bike and bury the keys. When my mom says finish packing up, it's time for us to go going, maybe she'll look around and she just won't see me. I know places to hide where they'll never find me. Like behind the racks of clothes at Seymour's the Cleaners, or underneath the piano at Eddie's basement or inside the pickle barrel at Friendly's Market, or maybe I could hide in the weeds in the lot next to Albert's house now that I know how to tell which is poison ivy. I'd rather have poison ivy than have to move. My dad says it might take a while, but I'll find a new soccer team. He says it might take a while, but I'll find boys my age. He says that sometimes when a person moves away, the fa his father might need to let go let him get a dog to be his friend till he makes some people friends. I'll th I think that Swoozy, too, might be a good name. My mom says it might take a while, but we'll find a great sitter. She says it might take a while, but we'll find a cleaner who even saves gum wrappers and old teeth. She also says that sometimes when a person moves away, his mother let, let him call his best friend long distance. I already know the telephone number by heart. Paul gave me a baseball cap. Rachel gave me a backpack and that glows in the dark. Mr. and Mrs. Oberdorf gave us treats to eat in a thousand miles. Nick says if I'm lonesome in my new room all by myself, he might let me sleep with him for a while. Anthony says that Nick is being mature. My dad is packing. My mom is packing. My brothers Nick and Anthony are packing. I don't like it, but I'm packing too. They better not try to move any more when we get there where we're going. Because this is the last time I'll do it. The next time they want to make me move, never, not, ever. No way, uh-uh, no, I'm not, do you hear me, I mean it, going to move. The end. All right, so we're going to do our five-finger retelling. So story, okay? So what was our setting in our book? Yell it nice and loud so I can hear you all the way over here. Remember, you're at home. I need to be able to hear you. You're right. The setting in our story was that he was at his house in his old town, and he was going to be moving a thousand miles away. Right? So who was moving? Who was our main character in the book? Who was it? Yell nice and loud. I can't hear you. You're right. Alexander. Alexander was our main character. Okay. What was the problem? What was the big problem in this story that Alexander had? It was what? Yell it nice and loud. I'll give you some time to think. It's part of our uh, the title of our book. What is it? You're right. He didn't want to move. Okay. So what was our, how did he try to solve the problem? He doesn't want to move. So what did he do? What did he do? There's lots of things he did. You're right. Okay, name them all. Let's go. What do we got? You're right. He decided he wasn't going to pack. He really didn't want to say bye to anybody, right? He didn't want to say goodbye. He didn't want to give things back. He didn't want to do any of that because he didn't want to move. Okay, so he tried to just not pack. He tried to find different places to live. He tried to do all that. Didn't work. So in the end, what happened? He did what? You're right. He decided that he was going to be able to call his friends and then he could find a new soccer team and that his brothers would actually be nice to him, right? And that he would make friends. So he ended up moving that 10,000 miles or 1,000 miles away from where he lives and all of his friends, okay? So you can go ahead and write that right in your notebook, okay? I wrote my name. And the date, and I just wrote retelling at the top. Okay, you can do S T O R Y. 
Okay, you can write that out. If you did it with me, you don't have to. If you want to just write it out so you can see it, that would be cool too. Okay, I think you guys are doing a great job. Keep it up.